Dear students, welcome to the problem solving session on Fourier cosine and sine transforms part 2. Those who don't watch the part 1 video, go to the playlist, watch part 1 video and come back here. We are going to solve a very interesting problem which we already solved in first year in semester 2. Do you remember? In complex analysis, using contour integral, we found this solution. But the procedure is very very long. Here, using the concept of Fourier, cosine and sine transform, we are going to solve the problem in a very simple way. Let us see this problem. Before going into the problem, we have to understand which I should choose, whether Fourier cosine transform or Fourier sine transform. Let us write the formula. Do you remember in part 1 video, fc of e power minus ax is going to be square root of 2 by pi a by s square plus a square and fs of e power minus ax is going to be square root of 2 by pi s by s square plus a square. Now we can see for the sine transform, I have variable s. Yes. For the cosine transform, transform I have constant a. So now see the question. So if your numerator consists of variable then you have to use Fourier sine transform. If your numerator is simply dx then you have to use Fourier cosine transform. This is the simplest idea behind this problem. So now see this problem. We have x square divided by x square plus a square into x square plus b square. I am going to use Fourier sine transform to find the value. Here I have two constant a and b. So, I am going to assume two functions f of x equal to e power minus ax, g of x equal to e power minus bx. Next, write the Fourier sine transform formula. We know this simply square root of 2 by pi s by s square plus a square. Done. I am just taking this as fs of s. Similarly, for the function g of x, so fs of g of x, I am just going to call this as gs of s. That is my assumption. Now, substitute the value of g of x it is going to be e power minus bx. I am going to get s by s square plus b square and the constant square root of 2 by pi. So now I find both the values. To find the deduction, we need the option of parcels identity because in parcels identity only we have fs of s into gs of s ds is equal to integral 0 to infinity f of x into g of x dx. If you use this formula, problem over, you get the full score. Now, write the values on the left hand side as well as the right hand side. Now, in the next step, club this 2 and then e power minus ax into e power minus bx can be written as e power minus of a plus bx dx. Integration of e power minus a plus b into x is going to be e power minus a plus b into x divided by minus of a plus b 0 to infinity. We know that e power minus infinity is 0 and e power 0 is 1. That's why I took 1 minus outside. Always we have to do it. Now substituting the limits, we will be getting e power minus infinity minus e power 0. That is nothing but minus 1 by a plus b into 0 minus 1. So minus into minus plus. Next we have to took this 2 by pi to the other side. Taking the 2 by pi to the other side, we will be getting pi divided by 2 into a plus b. But my question is in terms of x. So replace s by x and ds by dx will be getting our identity. We will be getting the answer. Hope you understand. Next problem is very obvious for you because you see the numerator is 1. It is constant. So, I am going to apply Fourier cosine transform. As usual, take the two functions. Now, apply Fourier cosine transform. It is going to be square root of 2 by pi a by s square plus a square. Similarly, when you go for the second function g of x, we assume this as gc of s and then we will be getting b by s square plus b square. Now, again run into the Parcel's identity. Now, using Parcel's identity on Fourier cosine transform, we can substitute the value of capital FC of S, GC of S and F of X and G of X in the right hand side. Simplifying this, we will be getting 2 by pi root 2 into root 2 root pi into root pi AB integral 0 to infinity ds divided by s square plus a square s square plus b square ds. On the other side, it is going to be 0 to infinity e power minus of a plus bx dx. Integrating this, integrating this will be getting e power minus of a plus b into x divided by minus of a plus b 
limit is 0 to infinity. Now, when you apply the upper limit, it will become e power minus infinity, lower limit e power minus 0. Denominator is a plus b. Now, we can see the typed version. It is going to be minus of a plus b, 0 minus 1, simply 1 by a plus b. When you simplify this and bringing this 2ab by pi to the other side, we will be getting the answer pi divided by 2ab into a plus b. As usual, replacing s by x, we get the answer. So, we can easily remember if the problem is 0 to infinity, dx by x square plus a square into x square plus b square, it is going to be pi divided by 2ab into a plus b. If it is x square into dx, then it is going to be pi divided by 2 into a plus b. In the denominator, we have the same x square plus a square, x square plus b square. That's it students. Suppose in exams, they will ask a question, evaluate integral 0 to infinity dx divided by x square plus 1 into x square plus 4. Don't go for the numbers. This is my suggestion because you may do lot of errors. So, immediately you say, let us assume integral 0 to infinity dx divided by x square plus a square into x square plus b square. Now, you can find the answer pi divided by 2ab into a plus b. After finding the general form, you can say that a square is equal to 1, b square is equal to 4. From this, I will take the positive value. This is very important. a equal to 1, b equal to 2. Now, substituting the value pi divided by 2 into 1 into 2, 2 plus 1, 3. My answer is going to be pi by 12. Problem over. In the same way, if they ask the problem for x square dx divided by x square plus 4 into x square plus 9, you just derive the general form in terms of a and b using Fourier sign transform that is integral 0 to infinity x square dx divided by x square plus a square into x square plus b square. My answer is going to be pi divided by 2 into a plus b. So, now a square is going to be 4, b square is going to be 9, a is plus 2 and b is going to be 3 because you can remember like this. My limit is positive. I have to take the positive value. Therefore, the solution for this problem is pi divided by 2 into a plus b that is 2 plus 3, 5. 2 5s are 10. My answer is pi by 10. So, if for any number problems, don't do with numbers just use this two problems and you can find the solution easily. So, in the previous problems, we see example 3 and 5. Next, we are going to see another problem, integral 0 to infinity. This time, numerator is x square, but my denominator is x square plus a square whole square dx. That means, now I don't have two functions, f of x and g of x. I have only one function, f of x is equal to e power minus ax. As I said, if my numerator has x square, it is a variable. I am going to apply Fourier sine transform. If my numerator is constant, I am going to apply Fourier cosine transform. It is very easy. So, it is very easy to see my Fourier sine transform of e power minus ax is square root of 2 by pi s by s square plus a square. Now, applying parcels identity on Fourier sine transform, since we have only one function, my parcels identity is going to be integral 0 to infinity modulus of fs of s whole square ds is equal to integral 0 to infinity modulus of f of x whole square dx. We know both the values. Substituting will get the answer easily. Now, squaring this, we will be getting 2 by pi on the right hand side, e power minus ax whole square, I can write it as e power minus 2ax. Now, integration of e power minus 2ax is e power minus 2ax divided by minus 2a. When you apply the upper limit, it will become e power minus infinity and lower limit e power minus 0 divided by minus 2a. Now, it is going to be 1 by 2a. Since minus 1 by 2a, 0 minus 1 will be getting 1 by 2a. Now, pushing this 2 by pi to the other side, we will be getting pi by 4a. The problem gets over. Now, as usual, replace s by x, we will be getting our answer. Therefore, integral 0 to infinity, x square divided by x square plus a square whole square dx is equal to pi by 4a. Hope you understand.
now a similar problem will come for cos see the numerator it is simply 1 or dx obviously then we are going to use fourier cosine transform in the denominator we have only one variable so i have only one function f of x e power minus ax then obviously we know this result now i am directly going for the partial identity on cosine transform fc of s and f, f of x will be getting this now simplifying this will be getting 2a square by pi as a constant here in the right hand side e power minus ax whole square is e power minus 2ax now applying the limits will be getting e power minus infinity e power minus 0 we know e power minus infinity is going to be 0 and e power 0 is 1 so we'll be getting the answer minus 1 by 2a 0 minus 1 minus into minus plus will be getting 1 by 2a now bring this 2a square by pi to the other side we'll be getting pi by 4a cube this is my answer now as usual replace s by x then we get integral 0 to infinity dx divided by x square plus a square whole square is pi divided by 4a cube so in this session we solve four different problems we understand that if my numerator is x square i am going to apply fourier sign transform if my numerator is simply some 1 into dx i am going to apply fourier cosine transform as like the first two problems there is a chance they can ask the next two problems also in this format like x square divided by x square plus 4 whole square dx my suggestion is always do for the general formula integral 0 to infinity x square divided by x square plus a square whole square dx you can easily solve this and prove the value is pi by 4a now come back to the question say that a square equal to 4 and we will take the positive value a equal to 2 therefore my answer is going to be pi divided by 4 into 2 that is 8 in the similar way if the problem comes for integral 0 to infinity dx divided by x square plus 9 whole square let us consider then just derive the general formula integral 0 to infinity dx divided by x square plus a square whole square it is going to be pi by 4a cube now we can find the a value here a square is 9 a value is going to be 3 so my answer is going to be pi divided by 4 into 3 cube that is 27 into 4 will be getting pi by 108 hope you understand in the next video we will see some other problems on Fourier cosine and sine transform thanks for watching subscribe to our channel and share to your friends see you in the next video bye bye